In this video, we're gonna break down exactly how to shoot anamorphic footage on a GH5 or GH5S. I used Lomo Anamorphics with my GH5 and the result was beautiful. I'm really blown away with how powerful this little camera is, which is why I was so surprised when I couldn't find a single video that broke down how to shoot anamorphic on a GH5. Every single video was either test footage or post-production workflow, nothing of how to shoot it. So I'm just gonna hook you guys up myself. Smash that like button if this helps you out. So let's get into it. This is gonna be a pretty in-depth video, so if you wanna skip to a certain section, I have some time codes in the description below. To shoot anamorphic on a GH5, you're gonna need these things. A GH5 or GH5S, which is pretty self-explanatory. A micro four-thirds to PL mount adapter. It doesn't need to be one of those smart adapters because these lenses are 100% manual, so just get something that's sturdy and won't break while you're shooting. I recommend either renting one or buying a wooden camera micro four-thirds to PL mount adapter. That's the one that I use and I've had some great results with it. A map box, this is gonna allow you to use filters like an ND or polarizer filter, block unwanted glare, and it just looks badass. A cage, rods, rod adapter, and lens support. The cage is for mounting your map box, your lens support, and a follow focus if you decide to get one. You can also kit it out with a mic and a monitor using the quarter 20 slots, or you can add a handle on top which will allow you to shoot differently, or even attach an easy rig on top, lighten the load a little bit. And lens support just helps you keep those front heavy lenses propped up so that nothing happens to your camera or the lenses during the shoot. ND filters. If you're shooting outside, this is a no-brainer. No the last thing you want is to show up on set and have to shoot stop down and miss out on all the anamorphic bokeh. Have ND filters on set so that you can go a little more wide open, maybe shoot at a T3 or a T4 and really get some nice creamy anamorphic bokeh and really just cut down on some of that light that's coming in. And these just drop right into your map box so you can really just control the look that you're going for. A high speed SD card. This will let you shoot higher resolutions like 6K anamorphic or higher bit rate options like the 400 megabits per second one. I recommend using a V90 SD card like the Sony one that I have or using any other V90 option. V60 is maybe passable, but I would really recommend just going for the V90. Shoulder rig or an easy rig. really recommend this because a kitted out GH5 with big anamorphic lenses is going to be heavy. You're going to want support. Oh, 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 my back. External monitor with anamorphic de-squeeze feature built in. I really recommend getting an external monitor for focus, framing, and the tools, but it's not required. Now if you do get an external monitor, make sure that it has de-squeeze feature built into it. The GH5 does not output de-squeezed anamorphic footage. There are some affordable monitor options that have de-squeeze features built into it, like the Feel World F6 that I use. Lenses. Here's where the fun part comes in. You can browse your local rental house and see what options they have available, or hop over to an online rental house for a huge selection of anamorphic options. I rented Lomo Anamorphics from Lens Pro to Go, but unfortunately the kit's not available anymore. They still got a few other options on there though. So when deciding lenses, here are some things to consider. Before anything, decide if anamorphic is right for the project. Do not use a higher budget as an excuse to rent vintage anamorphics when the client wants a clean corporate look. Now a music video or a short film, that's a little more in line with the anamorphic style. Decide if you want to shoot 2 times anamorphic or 1.33 times anamorphic. The 2 times anamorphic is going to squeeze your image down to a 2.39 to 1 ratio or 240 which is gonna be super widescreen. For example, if you use a 35 millimeter, two times anamorphic lens on a full frame sensor, you're gonna get a 17.5 millimeter horizontal field of view with a 35 millimeter vertical field of view. That's what's gonna give you that anamorphic bokeh in the background and a really cool stylized look. The other option is a 1.33 times squeeze anamorphic lens, which is gonna de-squeeze into a 16 by nine frame. Now with the bokeh in the background, it's gonna be less stretched out and almost more equivalent of a spherical lens, but still have some anamorphic character to it. Since they're shooting on a micro four thirds sensor, the lenses are gonna be cropped in on what the original focal length is, but not as much as you think. The GH5 uses its entire four x three sensor when it's shooting anamorphic mode. So after a little bit of math, the crop factor comes out to be about 1.4 times crop on the original focal length. 
To get the exact numbers, I've linked my favorite conversion tool in the description below. And finally, you want to decide your look. The project might call for a sci-fi blue flare style, or it could go for a warmer vintage style. Either way, do your research and check out some lens tests, get a feel for the flare, the characteristics, the barrel distortion, and decide what's right for your project. So once you get all that done, it's time to kit out your GH5 and go shoot. Hop into your GH5 settings and set the anamorphic de-squeeze feature on, then hop to your monitor settings and turn on the de-squeeze feature as well. Then hop back to your GH5, turn on anamorphic mode and select your frame rate and bit rate. Then you're good to go. This is really about having the right gear and preparation, then focusing on the creative side of the project. Shooting on set is pretty straightforward, maybe changing the bit rate and frame rate when needed, but for the most part, you're gonna be sticking to the same settings. Swap NDs and filters when necessary, make sure your camera and your monitor is powered, and you're pretty much good. Then you get some of that sweet, sweet anamorphic footage for your project. And that's it. That's how you shoot anamorphic footage on a GH5 or GH5S. In the next video, I'm gonna break down the post-production workflow of working with GH5 anamorphic footage. I'm gonna break down the proxy workflow and de-squeezing in Adobe Premiere. Subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified when the video is up. Thanks for watching and I hope you got something helpful out of this. Let me know if you have any questions or advice in the comment section below. Love to hear from you guys and I'll see you in the next one.